Dodge City and to the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Could I give you some more coffee? Uh, yeah, I guess so. How about you, Chester? Yes, sir, I believe I will. Uh, why don't you just leave the coffee pot here on the table, Miss Keller? Why, sure thing, Marshal. Right. Well, I got some fresh eggs this morning, if you're interested. They oh. were just brought in. Well, good, good. Uh, cook us up about a half a dozen of them, huh? Have them for you right away, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> All fresh right. eggs, my. I'll swear if Del Monaco's ain't getting to be about as fancy as some of them Kansas City restaurants. <laughs> well, that's civilization, Chester. Progress. Another five years and Dodge City will be tamed, curried, and bridled. <laughs> see and believe it, Mr. Dillon. No, you'll see it. Both of us will see it. That is, if we live that long. Yeah. I beg your pardon, gentlemen. Uh, you Mr. Yeah? Dillon, the marshal here? Ah, uh, yes, that's right. Well, I'm sorry to bother you at breakfast, marshal. My name is Hunter. Ed Hunter. Mr. Hunter. I'm a deputy sheriff from Richmond, Virginia. Come in on the Santa Fe this morning. I see. Well, uh, why don't you pull up a chair, Mr. Hunter? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Chester Proudfoot, Mr. Hunter. How do you do? How do you do, sir? So here's my first trip to the frontier. I find it a rather remarkable experience. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, won't you have some coffee? I uh, know, thank you. Marshal, I'm here to arrest two men who are wanted in Virginia. No? Here are the warrants and the orders of extradition. I stopped off for them in Topeka. Uh-huh. Yeah. John Allison, Calvin Moore. Both wanted for murder, huh? Hey, do you know these men, Mr. Hunter? No, sir, I don't. Well, the names aren't familiar to me. I never heard of them. Have you a Chester? No, sir, Mr. Dillon. Well, I have some information that may help. Not much on Allison, I'm afraid. He shot and killed a bank teller at Greenbrier last spring. Oh? He's about 30 years old, dark hair and mustache, medium build, an excellent horseman and a confirmed gambler. <laughs> Well, that's fine. That narrows it down to about two-thirds of the men in Dodge City. <laughs> well, possibly I can do a bit better in regard to Calvin Moore, Mr. Dillon. Now, he came down to Richmond from the north and set up practice as a medical doctor. He was about 29 at the time. And he ambushed and shot young Roger Beauregard and then left town. That uh -huh. was uh, 17 years ago. Beauregard's been trying to trace him ever since. Well, I'm afraid that's a pretty well, long time. I have a time. picture of Moore, photograph. Oh? Uh -huh. Of course, he was much younger than this. Oh, well, sometimes there's still quite a resemblance, even after 70. Something familiar about that picture, Mr. Dillon? Uh, uh, 17 years. He must be somewhere past 45 now, huh? Hmm. Are you sure that these men are here in Dodge, Mr. Hunter? Reasonably so. Is there something about that photograph that makes you... Well, it's, it's too blurred to tell much about it. Besides, he'd be 17 years older. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, I tell you what, Mr. Hunter, suppose you leave the picture and the descriptions with me, and I'll check around town, and I'll keep in touch with you. Uh, thank you, sir. Oh, I wonder if you might suggest a good hotel. Uh, certainly. Why don't you try the Dodge House? It's the corner of Railroad Avenue at the end of the plaza, the east end. Uh, tell the deacon I sent you. I uh, thank you again, Mr. Dillon, and I'll be grateful for any help you can give me in this matter. Yeah, sure. So long. You want to see the photograph, Chester? Yes, sir, I do. Well, Mr. Dillon, that is... That is... Yeah. What are you going to do, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. I... He's my friend. I, I, I never asked him anything about his life before he came here. Didn't seem to matter. But now the law says he's a murderer. I'm part of the law. So now it does matter. Maybe it's not him. No, it's him, all right, Chester. 
You saw it the same as I did. It's dark. This is the first chance I've had this week to clean a few instruments properly. <sighs> Gunshot wounds. Oh, Matt. I'll lay odds I'm the only doctor in the United States who makes three-fourths of his living off of gunshot wounds. <laughs> That's a rough country, Doc. Yes, indeed it's a rough country. Uh, maybe you ought to have stayed back east. Yes, huh? see, broken bones, babies, and gunshot wounds. Well, I wouldn't know the first thing about a good civilized case of gout anymore. Uh, what part of the East did you come from, Doc? Let's see, I went to medical school in Boston. I studied consumption, colic, liver complaints. <laughs> Never had a case of liver complaint in all the time I've been here, though. No, I guess that kind of thing is more common down south, around uh, Richmond, Virginia, for instance, huh? <clears throat> Matt, stop beating around the bush. You've got something on your mind, and it's bothering you. Look, Doc, uh, a deputy sheriff from Virginia came in on the morning train. He's got a warrant for murder against a man named Calvin Moore. He's got a photograph of Moore taken 17 years ago. Would you like to look at it? All things are taken from us and become portions and parcels of the dreadful past. Are you Calvin Moore? It wasn't murder, Matt. They said it was murder, of course. The Beauregards were an important family. Would you like to tell me about it? Oh, not much to tell, Matt. I had been in practice in Richmond about a year. There was a girl. Beautiful girl. The spirit and fire and that soft radiance that only southern girls seem to have. And, you know, me, that was so long ago. Uh -huh. I've been in the South myself now. Roger Beauregard and I were both caught in this girl. He was a typical Virginia gentleman, hot-headed, used to having his own way. He started threatening me, warning me. And I laughed it off. Then one day I was coming back from a case, and I ran into Roger on a country road. He had a pair of dueling pistols, and he challenged me. What? Well, that's not a crime, Doc. That's self-defense. It's not a crime here or anywhere. Well, I tried to talk him out of it, but he was crazy mad. He shoved one of the pistols in my hand, and he pulled back on his horse, and he leveled his gun. I had no choice. We both fired. He missed. I didn't. Self-defense, yes, but there were no witnesses, and I was an outsider, a Yankee. So you ran for it, is that it? I ran for it. St. Louis, Virginia City... Montana Territory, the Panhandle, Wichita, Abilene, and Dodge. I changed my name to Charles Adams. And the, uh, the girl, Doc, what happened to her? I waited for her in St. Louis. We were married there. Two months later, she died of typhoid fever. Well, you never know. No matter how much you figure you understand somebody, you just quite never know. I can't go back there, Matt. I've got no defense. It, well, I'd mean prison. I'd rot in prison. I, I won't go back, Matt. Now, Doc, look, Hunter is here after two prisoners. I got no right to, to my own rules to go after one man and keep the other one covered. I always figured that the only kind of law that would work out here is an honest law. What are you going to do? Doc, I don't know. You're late, Matt. I decided you weren't going to stop in tonight. Is Chester around? Kid? Yeah, over there by the faro table. No. Matt, what about this Virginian who's been hanging around for the last two days? Oh, Hunter? Yeah. He's a deputy sheriff, got a couple of warrants to serve. Why? 
Well, he's been asking questions. Some of the boys are getting a little skittish. Now, there's no call for it as long as they're not named Allison or Moore. Are you free now, Miss Kitty, huh? or are you busy? What's it look like? Well, I figured maybe he was just killing time. Uh, hiya, Marshal. Bunko? Uh, bought you a drink, Kitty. It's over on the bar. All right. Thanks. Matt, I'll be off in a couple of hours. Drop around. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I understand you've got a rival lawman in town, Marshal. Well, there's a deputy here from Virginia, if that's what you mean. I always figured you were the law here. Is he short in this town, Marshal? Say the word, we'll run him out. I ever ask you for help, Bunko? Well, no. When but... a man's short in Dodge, I'll run him out. And no offense, You Marshall. keep your own cinch tight. Don't worry about anybody else, huh? I'll see you, Bunko. I swear I never saw anybody such bad luck in all my life. My gracious, he ought to swear off Pharaoh and stick the stud. Oh, Chester. Hmm? The old Jethro Keener. He just lost three weeks' pay. And Bunko Benson, sitting right there beside him, mind you, picked up two hundred and thirty dollars. So that's why he's feeling big. Uh, come on, Chester, let's take a walk. Huh? Yes, sir. Three weeks' pay. Mercy, I never saw such luck. What about Doc, Chester? He turned in a couple hours ago. That's when I came on over here. How's he acting? About as usual. No signs of planning to run out, if that's what you mean, Mr. Don. One thing he's doing, though, that he's never done before, he's toting a gun. Uh, good evening, Marshal. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Hunter. Since you didn't come to me, Mr. Dillon, I've come to you. I'm wondering what progress you've made. Well, I, uh, I'm still checking. Any results at all, Marshal? Well, I don't have much to go on, you know. Now, Calvin Moore was a doctor by profession. He might still be practicing. I suggest we investigate the local doctors. Well, that wouldn't take long. We've only got one, Doc Adams. How long has he been here? Oh, about four years. How old a man is he? Mm, late 40s, I imagine. But he doesn't show much resemblance to that photograph you gave me. Well, maybe you're too used to him to notice the resemblance. Yeah, maybe. I'd like to look him over myself, Marshal. Well, uh, he's pretty busy out on calls most of the time. and uh... Not all the time. No, not all the time. All right, Mr. Hunter, I'll bring him around. That's funny, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, he should have answered by now. Well, we're wasting our time, Chester. He's gone. Well, now, he, he, he might have got called out on a case. Yeah, I know, but I don't... Hey, what? Uh, that was across the plaza, down toward the Dodge house. Come on, Chester. Somebody sure is stirring up smoke. Yeah, yeah it's across the street. Edge of the railroad yards, I think. Is that you, Marshal? Yeah. What happened, Mr. Hunter? Somebody tried to kill me. I started into the hotel and they fired from the dock here. I fired back, but he got away. You, uh, get a good look at him? Oh, no, I just saw the flashes. Well, this is an easy town to get killed in, Mr. Hunter. So it seems. About that doctor, Marshal, you didn't bring him around. Well, uh, he's out on call. I think I want to meet him more than ever now. Return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, there's a world of wonderful entertainment awaiting you every weekday in the daytime with CBS Radio's roster of wonderful dramatic serials. 
This Monday, listen in. And now, for the second act of Gunsmoke. What time is it, Chester? Uh, 2.15 a.m., Mr. Dillon. Yeah. I sure hope we don't have to spend the whole night waiting here. I don't see how Doc puts up with the smell of all this medicine. He's used to it, I guess. Yeah. I suppose a man can get used to anything except dying. You think it could have been him that fired those shots, Mr. Dillon? Chester. Hmm? There's somebody coming. Come on in, Bunko. The doc's not here, but he'll probably be... Oh, what happened to your arm? I... I got thrown into a barbed wire fence. Here, let's have a look at it, huh? No, 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 no. It's, it's all right. It's a gunshot wound. All right, hold it, both of you. Well, is that the same gun you tried to kill Hunter with, Bunko? Stay where you are, Marshal. Yeah. Around 30 years old, dark hair, mustache... Medium build, excellent horseman, re- confirmed gambler. Wanted from her. John Allison. Uh, alias Bunko Benson. Am I right, Bunko? He's not taking me back there. You stay where you are, Dylan. Now, don't be a fool, Bunko. Put away the gun. Stay back. I'm... I'm warning you. Bunko, look! All right, Chester, let's get him over to the jail. Mm, Just hold still now, Bunker. Just 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 one more second. I'll have hold that bullet now, and then... We'll just... Ah! Oh, there. <laughs> uh, and I'll add that one to your collection, Matt. Well, I'll make Hunter a present of it. It wasn't bad shooting to be firing in the dark at a gun flash. He'll never get me back to Virginia. Well, now, hold still, Bunko. Oh, I don't expect right, a man to tie a bandage with your arm, waving like it around like a mare's tail in fly time. See, how'd you know he'd come to my office, Matt? I didn't, Doc. We were waiting for you. Oh, I see. There we are. No, 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 no. That ought to stop the bleeding. And don't loosen it up, Eddie. <laughs> and you'll live the hang yet. Don't worry about my hanging, Doc. I'll outlive you. Well, in view of the circumstances, uh, I'd say the odds are about even. Well, Matt, shall we adjourn to the front office? Yeah, come on, Doc. Uh, lock the cell, will you, Chester? Yes, sir. Well, I turned in at 10 o'clock tonight. I got one hour of sleep. They called me over to Mrs. Behan's. She thought her baby was on the way. False alarm, of course. Usually is the first time. And I got back and I came straight over here. Uh, Doc, you were wearing a gun earlier today. What'd you do with it? Oh, I put it back in the drawer where it belonged. I realized I was acting like a fool. Uh, was that where you were waiting in my office? Somebody tried to kill Hunter, and, and you thought... Uh, Look, Doc, I, I've i tried to think of some way out of this. Uh, a way out for both of us. I got one man under arrest back there now, and I, I can't rightly set myself up as a judge and free the other man. I'd even hoped you'd cut and run for it. You, you'd get away if you did, you know. Hunter doesn't know the country. I've been running for 17 years, Matt, and... And it's still caught up with me. I'm too old to run any farther. What are you going to do? I'm a lawman, Doc, right or wrong. Well, then, uh, 
gets him under arrest. Huh? No, I, I, I didn't say that. I, I just said that. Is Doc Evans here? There's a... Oh, oh, there you are, Doc. Yes, yes, what's the trouble? A what's... fellow over in the railroad yards asleep on the track. He was drunk, I guess. They were switching cars. You better come, Doc. He's awful bad. Oh, I... I got two lanterns, Mr. Dillon. That ought to be enough. Good, Chester. You're ready, Doc. You're ready as I'll ever be. All right, let's go, then. Uh, he said near the loading pens, down this way, I guess. Yes, sir. It looks like some lights over there. People around. Yeah. Marshal, is that you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Hunter. Uh, I thought you went to bed hours ago. I'm a light sleeper, Mr. Dillon. I heard there's an accident over in the yards. Thought it might give me a chance to meet your local doctor. Well, I uh, guess you can meet him right now if you want to. Doc, this is Ed Hunter, Doc Adams. How do you do, sir? Mr. Hunter? I, uh, I got one of your prisoners locked up, Mr. Hunter, John Allison. Known here as Bunko Benson. Good. I just found out he's the man who tried to kill you tonight. He caught one oh? of your bullets in his arm. Oh, I see. Why, then it's one down and one to go. Just Calvin Moore. Dr. Calvin Moore. Uh, this is no time to stand around making chin music. I'm sorry, well, that's Hunter. That's quite but... all right, Marshal. I'll go with you. <laughs> Will you pardon us, please? Uh, all right, will you move back and let us through here, please? Here, here, Doc, this way. Yeah, I'm right, will you, Matt? Uh, please stand back now, will you? Give Doc a chance to yes, work. Yes, uh, please, if you please, just stand back. Uh, oh, oh, bad is right. Uh, well, we'll do what we can. Come on. That man who's hurt, Marshal, who is he? Oh, just a drifter. Been around Dodge a couple of years. Calls himself Texas Joe. No friends or family. Nobody knows where he came from. It's the usual story. Oh, easy now, Tex. We'll have you fixed up here in just a couple of shakes. Is is that you, Doc? Hey, that's right. <laughs> I told him, get you. Be all right if you got here. Why, sure, it'll be all right. You just lie still now. And... Yeah. <laughs> Certainly has to work under primitive conditions. Doc? Mm. Yeah. Uh, Chester, will you get those lanterns going and give Doc some more light? Yes, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, he's the only real doctor this side of Abilene. Hey, Mr. Dillon, is there anything I can do to help? I guess not, Miss Kelly. Thanks, anyway. Poor old Tex. Why, he stopped in the restaurant not more than four hours ago. I fixed him a meal. Thank you. Uh, you never know. Well, Doc can pull him through if anybody can. Sure he can. Yeah, put one of those lanterns on the other side there, Chester. Yes, he does. You seem to have a lot of faith in this Dr. Adams. They've got reason to, Mr. Hunter. Uh, Matt, uh, could you give me a hand here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure, Doc. Lift his head up just a little bit there, Matt. Yeah, That's all right. Uh, not much of a chance. All I can do is make him comfortable. Marshal Dillon. No, don't try to talk, Taxi. You're going to be all right. You, you've been decent to me, Marshal. Mr. Bum, but you treated me square. You and Doc, only friends I got. Sure, Tex. I... I got one more favor to ask. Could someone... Could someone read me some scripture? Well, Tex, I... I just don't recall any Marshall, of that. Marshal, I... I know some. Uh, Mrs. Kelly, I, I doubt if you can I, hear. I can hear... Please. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Uh, Mrs. Kelly. He restoreth my soul. Uh, Mrs. Kelly. He... Uh, I think that's enough. Of course. Well, you can't win them all, I guess. No, you can't win them all, Doctor. Well, I... Doctor, as the only physician here, I suppose you also function as coroner. That's right. 
This man will be bearing under the name of Texas Joe. Hey, don't you worry about that. <clears throat> Boot Hill is full of men buried under nicknames. In this country, we... Doc! Doc, I just came from... Oh. What, Kitty? Oh, uh, Doc, I, I've been sitting up with Mrs. B, and you left too soon. She needs you over there right away. Well, then it wasn't a false alarm. No. All right, Kitty, I'll be there just as quick as I can, but... Well, well, as soon as I... Uh, Kitty, you go on back over and do what you can for her, huh? Doc will be along. Oh. All right, Matt, but you better hurry. Well, Mr. Hunter, I, uh... Uh, gentlemen, this seems to have been my lucky night. Both my fugitives located within an hour of each other. I guess there's nothing I one can do One of them safely to... in jail and one of them dead. What? Uh, didn't you notice the resemblance, Marshal? That Texas Joe there, he's obviously the man in the photograph. I saw it immediately. Well, Mr. I hope Hunter, you'll I... take all the necessary steps to see that he's buried under his real name, Calvin Moore. His death, of course, closes the case, and I'll be leaving for Virginia with my other prisoner tomorrow. Well, Mr. Hunter, I... I just don't know what to say. Well, I... Now, I'd say it's no time to stand around making chin music, Dr. Adams. You have a patient waiting, and this town seems to depend on you. Well, well of course, but... Hey, you got I... work to do, Doc. And, uh, Doc, make sure it's a boy, huh? Well, I'll, uh, um, uh, I'll do my darndest, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, good night, gentlemen. Good night, Doc. Good night, Doc. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Lou Krugman, Paul Dubov, and Vivi Janis. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas, through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Tomorrow evening, listen for Lionel Barrymore, your host on CBS Radio's Sunday Night Playhouse. There will be another specially selected historical drama or a classic from literature with a cast of stars perfectly suited for the roles in the story. Every Sunday evening, hear Lionel Barrymore on your Sunday Night Playhouse over most of these same CBS radio stations. Truly an outstanding dramatic experience here at the Star's Address. Roy Rowan speaking. And remember, for thrilling dramas of escape, Listen every Sunday night to the CBS Radio Network.